I used to think it's not worth overclocking AMD CPUs and Intel was the way to go if I want to do all that stuff. I'm proven wrong. And this is my story with the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X that arrived here in the lab just a few days ago. Now as you can see, the Ryzen 5 7600 here, which is part of the new 7000 series, is a very different design compared to all the previous years of AMD CPU. The surface area seems smaller and the overall unit looks a little thicker than before. And yes, it's an LGA CPU now, so you don't have to worry about bent or broken pins. And if you think appearance is the only thing that's changed, remember what I said about tuning? Yes, even that part is different. Oh yes, and if you heard the AMD is hot thing from the past, well, it's true now as well. So in this video, I'll be covering a bunch of stuff despite my very short time with the CPU that just arrived a few days ago and despite my total lack of sleep and while mood swings, I'm happy to inform that I've got most of the bases covered. So let's uh, go through what I'm going to talk about because I have a pad here. So you need to see it, <laughs> then, then you know at least when my eye is moving away, I'm you know that I'm looking at something rather than instead of uh, not making eye contact with you. So first thing we're going to talk about is cooling, co uh, co cooling compatibility, after that the thermals, and after that details about overclocking and tuning, followed by benchmarks and wrap up of what I think of the 7600X. Now in this video, I'll be looking at this a lot because it's too much to digest in my uh, not so big brain and the tired state of myself over this recording with my benchmarks and everything done over the weekend, it is tiring. And before I begin, if you like this kind of content or this one-man show, please do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Now let's dive into the details. Now, mm, let's start with cooling compatibility now. Now the first thing I, I would like to show you is how to get the CPU into place, which is very simple. All you have to do is unlock the latch, place the CPU, and you're good to go. You cannot go wrong with this process. I mean, you can't go wrong at all unless you, for some reason, drop the CPU on the pins. So that will damage the board and void warranty and all that. So please do not do that. Be careful. Now the good news is, for this AM5 system, it will work with AM4 coolers. Nice. However, the bad news is that there's conditions because this AM5 board now, you know, the, the, they, they used to have a, this, a, the AMD boards has this plate, you know, the back, placed at the underside of the motherboard and holding the bracket. Now this plate is secured to the board. So what happens is you can remove the clip uh, plastic and all that however the, the back plate thing will remain on the board so like my NH-U12S I'm able to inf install it just fine because it's using that exact plate however if your cooling system your cooling um, equipment uses its own bracket that uh, like goes through that uh, holes for the AM4 pins well you will not be able to use them Next up, we have thermals. While the previous generation, 5600X, runs Blender workload fine and the NHU12S kept it below 70 degrees Celsius, the 7600X saw it going beyond 90 degrees Celsius which is insanely hot for a 6-core CPU. So I went on to replace the cooler with the Silverstone PF3060, PF which is a 360mm AIO. It's not the highest spec of AIO, but it's good enough to use over here. And I, what I managed, what it, the performance is that it managed to get the 7600X tamed at just a little bit over 80 degrees Celsius with the wall draw being a little over 210 watts using the FSP Hydro PTM Pro 850 watts 80 plus platinum power supply. Now I have to make it clear though that I'm using Blender benchmark to max out the possible heat generated from the CPU using a realistic load. Not using Prime95 for that reason because those are unrealistic load. However, this realistic load is a production, production type of workload. So if you are just gaming away, then the NHU12S would be just fine. The temperature wouldn't be like touching that 90 degrees range. So yeah, and fortunately, fortunately, the AM5 CPU here is very easy to tune, which is unlike the AM4 models. Now, let's talk about this part for tuning and overclock. 
the system by default runs at 1.25 volts and from my experience uh, when I tried to overclock being an overclocker I straight away jumped to 5 gigahertz and 1.3 volts it ran so it ran fine so I tried 5.1 works 5.2 works 5.3 it works so I'm surprised this is the first time ever when I uh, in my overclocking experience that I had zero failure at all I ran the multi-core workload and I ran the four games no problem at all four games so you know uh, I wasn't supposed to say four games but well that means you know what I'm going to show in the benchmark already I will talk, we'll talk about that a bit later so by the time I hit 5.4 GHz I tuned it down to 1.2 V core and it still works I tried 5.5 at 1.2 V core that's where I have a bit of a hiccup when doing benchmark so I haven't tuned that yet because um, that's very little time I have with this uh, CPU however 5.5 gigahertz looks like it's doable I'm doing 5.4 and for the record the on the product page of the 7600X the base clock is 4.7 gigahertz and the boost clock is 5.3 gigahertz and my overclock is already at 5.4 gigahertz stable best part is yes I can tune down the voltage and it runs stable it runs impressively cool I mean when on stock it feels hot but after tune it's nice so now be, uh, that aside um, before we head to the benchmarks I would like to talk about memory speed as well um, the recommended speed for the AMM5 system is 6000 megahertz so that's supposedly the sweet spot however um, 6000 6, megahertz memory is rather pricey especially over here Malaysia retails at about 1000 plus the lowest I find is close to 1000 Malaysian ringgit as well so I uh, over, tried running at 5200 megahertz speed and my finding is uh, really interesting because um, it feels like while the 6000 megahertz is a sweet spot it is not exactly it's the 5200 megahertz is not too far off so it's it's good so if you couldn't afford the 6000 megahertz memory you can consider going for the 5 5200 megahertz DDR5 and it will cost less and you still uh, get good performance and speaking of memory uh, you read about how the first boot can be slow when the memory is uh, reset or when the first boot you know uh, like you load the XMP or change the memory setting there'll be delayed time and set such whatever Astro has uh, this is to what I know pertaining to Astro bots only so Astro has released new BIOS for the X670E uh, motherboard so all you need to do is perform a BIOS flashback you don't need the CPU you just need to put the 24 pin on and load the BIOS on the USB drive place it in the correct USB port press the uh, BIOS flashback button for a few seconds and the BIOS flashback will perform the task so yeah it's uh, something easy if you need to do many if you need if you're a dealer and you need to set up many systems then this is the fastest way to go rather than you know installing CPU everything so that's pretty much it now on with the benchmarks I'm only using four games this time because these four games are what I have the numbers for the 5900X and this uh, 12 gen Intel CPUs and all that and also makes everything faster and the reason for these four games is I find that they are the most CPU sensitive so uh, my setup I'm using the Astro X70E Tai Chi Carrera and for the memory I'm using the PNY Maco 6000 megahertz DDR5 and for the graphics card it's an AMD RX 6900 XT reference model while my cooler is the Silverstone PF360 AIO now is that done well, let's dive into the details of the benchmark now starting with the stock 7600X against Intel competitions I'm surprised to see it took the lead in shadow of the Tomb Raider with ease and also the Division 2 only to lose out to both in Far Cry 6 and outperforming the i5 on Ghost Recon Breakpoint on the next chart, the 7600X in multiple configurations and as you can see, the 5900X is of no match at all other than Ghost Recon Breakpoint which I find to be call count reliant. Out of curiosity, I tried the 5200 megahertz configuration of which I mentioned earlier and to my surprise, the performance is very close to that of the 6000 megahertz settings. So if this is what you can afford, don't be shy to go with it. And if you are comfortable with overclocking, you stand to gain even more performance from the 7600X. One thing you have to understand though is that the setup I'm using here is of a 
high-end configuration. And the benchmark I'm using is 1080p. This does not make sense in the sense that typically someone with this kind of setup would be running on a 1440p screen or wider resolution screen like you know the ultra ultra wide super wide whatever or even 4k whichever it is um, typically people with this kind of setup do not run at 1080p settings so what i'm getting across to you is that this 1080p testing is just to show you the cpu differences in actual gaming when the resolution is bigger your the gap will be reduced and if your graphics card is lower than the 6900 xt like maybe say 6700 6600 whatever the difference is even less so you shouldn't be worrying so much about this um, the memory and whatever these kind of things so this is just to show you the, the details all in all what i've presented to you consider everything and well we'll go into that in detail later when it comes to uh, the wrap up now let's go for the blender benchmark for multi-core workloads Again, the 7600X, no matter how fast it is or how great the IPC gains are, it's not able to make up for the lack of cores against the Intel's 12600K and also AMD's own offerings. Oh, and one more thing that I would like to share to you is that this CPU actually comes with onboard graphics, which is a nice touch. I've decided to give the onboard graphics a try with Dota 2. I'm unable to locate the driver through AMD's website just yet, so I'm relying on Astrox Auto Driver Installer to get the driver for me. And this recording is done using Windows Xbox Game Bar. And I hope this recording gives you an insight on the graphical capability of the onboard graphics system. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Radiance Bottom Tower is under attack. Yes, Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Overall, I feel that um, the 7600X here is an enthusiast product. I love it a lot. I love it for the tuning. Right off the box, it actually beats a, the Core i9 in a few titles, only to lose out to a few in a few titles where the, I believe that those titles are like Ghost Recon Breakpoint. I feel like it's not it's not that great of a game engine, and it's a very it feels like it's very core count reliant. So. Uh, this to me is very impressive because um, when I had the I bought the Core i5 12600K to tune because I, I felt that 12900K wasn't fun, it's so hot and all that. So um, it took me a lot of effort to get the i5 to able to reach the Core i9's performance level. And you know what? The 7600X here just out of the box bah! and it's already uh, outperforming in various titles and once you overclock it gets even closer. So yeah, I have so basically, if you have no intention to tune um, the 7600X, then you have to consider your options carefully because the cost of ownership can be high. I know there's a B650 series board coming. I personally don't even have the price yet, but you can pretty much guess how much it will be. And then, though you can go with the affordable 5200X, however, you have other options like say, um, for example, the Intel Core i5 12600K would be a better all-rounder, in my opinion, as it supports DDR4, of which you can inherit from your old system, and it pushes frame rates well, and it has more cores. It's the same cores, theoretically, 612, but it has 4E cores, and because of that, it actually does perform better when it comes to multi-core workloads. And then, uh, if you're just into gaming, strictly just gaming, you're not into right, pushing frame rates, you just want something that, that game. Anything below the sub below RM1000 price point like the 12400F the, or this um, AMD's own 5600X they are good or you can go with the 5700X which is really good as well and if you are if you want um, something that can push frame rates there's always a 5100X 3D of which I do not have the chance to test yet 
and then there's also the if you are, if you want something that has uh, that's more production workload oriented you want something that can push multi-core uh, really well the 5900X is there. I'm using the 5900X actually for my gaming and for my productivity, like producing uh, this content. So, yeah, you have a, a lot of other options. But still, I am still impressed by the 7600X. Not for the stock performance, no, not for what it is out of the box. Because the stock performance, truth be told, when I first tried it, I was shocked, not in a good way, because it's a 6 core 12 track that costs this much and runs this hot with barely that much gain when it comes to uh, multi core workload. Although gaming is actually imp imp impressive, but to justify it being able just to push frame rate, but at the cost of this, it somehow felt not justified. After all, it's been done by the, the, the other camp, the blue camp. But it's when I actually did the tuning that I felt that it's so impressive. I mean, seriously, being able to, it's like, it makes, at first, it, on, on stock, it just does not make sense at all. But wow, the joy I got when I actually tuned it. So up to 5.4 gigahertz, being able to tune down the voltage, I have minimal hiccups. And it's so good that I feel like um, going back to tune some more after I get all these things done. I've, about fish, I have um, not likely to be able to do so much soon because um, I'm recording this. It's all right. It's almost two a.m. on a Monday morning, and tomorrow, Tuesday, over here is an AMD launch of which I've already prepared my rig over there with the seventy six hundred X to be at the event. So uh, where am I? I'm I'm, I'm digressing. So basically, I like the seventy six hundred X. Whether I will recommend you straight away get the CPU is another thing altogether because um, it is something that um, I would say uh, really depends on what you need and what you want there are still many other options personally I feel that the higher end models should be able to push the frame rates even more especially if the, the games are uh, core count uh, reliant but other than that, this, uh, this 7600X is impressive in my book. I, I guess it represents the 7000 series in general to be something that you can tune a lot. Though it's hot out of the box, um, looks like AMD went really all out aggressive with the power and all those things. But I'm happy that you can actually tune it to be gentle on the on the load well that's all for this one sorry for this lengthy sharing i know i i actually wrote the script by the when it comes to my head i'll just share anyway thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next one do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and bye bye